สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Thailand 2020. I am Tulip n a k s o m p o p This program will take a look into every aspect of Thailand future. Today we will talk to the founding member of the Foundation for Women on the concerning issue regarding the discrimination of our form against women in Thailand. Women in Thailand were among the first women in Asia who were granted the right to vote in 1932. Nevertheless, international community still sees Thai women as underrepresented in Thai politics. The 2007 Constitution of Thailand upholds equal rights and protection between women and men. Legislative amendments have been made to improve women's ability to claim their rights. In 2005, the Name Act was amended to allow women the right to choose a family name. In 2007, the Penal Code was amended to criminalize marital rape, and the Civil Code amended to provide women and men equal grounds for divorce. The Protection of Victims of Domestic Violence Act was passed in 2007, providing for the protection and rehabilitation of victims, requiring members of the public to report alleged abuse. And obliging law enforcement officers to respond to reports of violence. The Prevention and Suppression of Human Trafficking Act was passed in 2008. Thailand's strong determination to promote women in power and decision making shown in the 11th National Development Economic and Social Development Plan 2012-2016. One of its concepts and strategies to create the just society is that women should be promoted to managerial and decision-making positions at both local and national levels to add a greater contribution to the country's development and an attitude toward gender equality in children, youth, and the populace to be enhanced. Is with the chairperson of Foundation for Women Thailand, Kun Siripon Subrobanet. สวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีค่ะ Thank you very much for your time. Before we get into the conversation, I probably have to ask you uh, to tell us a little bit of background of the foundation itself first. Yeah. Um, foundation for Women is the local women's organization set up in 1984. The prime purpose of uh, the Foundation for Women is to promote the human rights of women uh, outlined in the Convention for the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women. But when we set up the Foundation, this is due to the fact that at that time there was an incident in Phuket mm. that um, a few young women uh, were caught in fire because there was a fire in Phuket oh. and uh, some uh, young women aged uh, 12, 15, uh, they said that they were uh, burnt alive because they were kept in the a brothel in Phuket. Oh. So it was a shock of the country and at that time, if you know, um, that Thailand has a very bad reputation of being the brothel of Asia. So uh, at that time when the Foundation for Women set up, we tackled this issue um, because um, not only a prostitution in Thailand, but also there was an influx of Thai women migrate overseas uh -huh. to get involved in the sex industry in Europe and in Japan, and those kind of things. So um, at the beginning, Foundation for Women, we set up the Women's Information Center in order to uh, provide information for women who want to go abroad either to marry or to work because in our course of the work we respect the basic human rights of women because migration to some women is the only uh, opportunity yeah. option in their life in yeah. order to improve their uh, quality of life and um, at the same time we also work with the Ministry of Education to promote a campaign on child prostitution. Mm. Uh, we produced a book called Kamla and mm. we collaborated. Oh, I heard about that book. Yes, it's, uh, many, it's many years back. 
Uh, yes, in the uh, uh, 90s, I think yeah. around that time. And um, it uh, was based from the story of a girl who, uh, who, did, who was dead in the Phuket Fire. And the Minister of Education collaborated with us and uh, allowed us to use this book in the class to discuss, to give information to children about this um, uh, kind of uh, problem. So the work of the foundation itself starts since 1990s? Do, um, in 84. In 1984? Yes, okay. 84. So it started yeah, because of that? Maybe you were not yet born. I was, oh, that's so kind of you, but uh, I was already born yet. <laughs> oh, I, I was already born at the time. Um, so it started off because of this fired incident in Phuket and yeah. it sounds like it's the, the fire in the Phuket and also um, because I went to study in Europe and mm. then I came across uh, many Thai women who work in the um, brothels right. in Germany in the Netherlands mm. so uh, many of them had they known about the situation they might not um, decide to come to work in Europe. That's why we set up the Women's Information Center. So it seems like you have been focused on the um, trafficking and exploitation? Trafficking and uh, child prostitution. Mm. Uh, even though we are against child prostitution, but at the same time we also consider the rise of women in prostitution. Right. Because if you use the human rights framework, um, in the course of your work you cannot uh, violate the basic rights of any group. So mm. we think that um, the whole society uh, say no to child prostitution, mm. right? But on the issue of the prostitution of adult women is still a big debate right. until now. Right. Mm. So since the start, you start as the information center. Yes, now, information and now center. It's become the foundation. Yes, and then they registered as the foundation for women. Has the mission changed? Yeah, and then after this issue of sexual exploitation, we also moved to the issue of domestic violence mm. because at that time, people still think that beating their wives is the right of men. Yeah, because right. when you're married, then uh, she in, becomes the society. property, right. yeah. even today. Right. So we started the uh, home for better women in Bangkok. Mm. So it's the first shelter for better women. And then we also campaign on this issue of domestic violence. But it took so many years until Thailand um, uh, enacted a law on the protection of victims of domestic violence. Right, because before that, when there is any fight between spouse, people will just leave it alone and yeah. think that it's not uh, no one else's business, yes, even yes. today. So have you think, do you think since the 1980s, something until now, since you start working on this issue, has society revolved itself in any more positive way? Yeah, I think in terms of um, uh, legal national legislation. We see also many new laws mm. in order to protect the rights of women. Like for instance, there is a reform of the prostitution law, yeah, uh, in which um, prostitution of children is a criminal offense, mm. right? But the prostitution of adult person is still in a legal loophole because right. the law said that um, is. Um, an offense, but if you upset the public morality, the woman themselves can be fined. But there is no imprisonment or um, uh, compulsory rehabilitation for adult women. Right. But I think it's time also to review this law. And then we have a new law on the um, trafficking in persons, not only in women and girls, but also persons in general, because as you may see that now, there are also men who have become victims right. of the international trafficking in the other in industry, not just only in sex industry. And then this law for the protection of the victims of domestic violence. So I think that in terms of um, law, legal protection, um, uh, talent has um, developed. De developed, but the problem is how to put the law into practice. Right. Seems like we have that kind of problem in every aspect, how to enforce the law. Yeah, <laughs> and how to change the mindset of people. 
to respect more the human rights of others, especially um, the deprived groups like the tribal, mm. the, uh, and the, the poor, the young people. Yeah. Uh, Has the focus changed since the start? Too? I think we still work around on this um, women's human rights, but then it's also a very broad uh, framework, right? So you can put everything in the human rights of women. And uh, I think that um, in, uh, in the course of our work, we also try to deepen understanding because I don't know whether you know about this CEDO, mm. the um, International the Human Rights Convention right. uh, Against the Discrimination of All Forms discrimination of all forms uh, against women. And I think that um, the UNIFEM at that time and UN Women right now, they also provide support to the Foundation for Women to mm. organize training to uh, women's groups. Uh, what is this CEDO? What this equality stands for? And those kind of things. So I think that's that's also um, a I very useful. I was going to ask you the relationship between the foundation um, with the UN Women. So basically, it's working in support with each other. Uh, the UN Women, the, since UNIFEM provide has provided support to the foundation and also to the women's network in Thailand at first to deepen their understanding on CEDO mm. and to interact with the ASEAN. Yeah? For instance, um, during the time that the um, ASEAN um, drafted the uh, Declaration on the Human Rights, mm. um, the uh, women uh, from different sectors in Thailand worked together with the regional women's organization to, um, to lobby on the, uh, on the content right. of the, uh, the Declaration so that they would um, respect the normative standard of human rights and when the ASEAN set up this ASEAN Commission mm. on Women and Children, we also work together in order to, um, to uh, give some uh, recommendations when they make this ASEAN Declaration on the Rights of Women and Children. Coming from the uh, Foundation for Women perspective, you look at the ASEAN region as a whole, mm -hmm. what would be the most concerning issue of the region or each country has its own specific concerning issues, one um, more than the other? Because if you look at ASEAN or ASEAN uh, member countries, they are state parties to CEDO. So the issue is that um, how to make them comply to mm. the standard sets in CEDO. Because if you look at the first draft of the um, ASEAN either Declaration on Human Rights or on the Rights of Women and Children, I think that they are uh, going backward. Going backward? Yes. Okay. How? <laughs> yeah, because they don't respect um, that um, the uh, human rights um, is not contained only in the national legal framework right. because that is the international mm. yeah, human rights standard. So I think that we have to remind the um, ASEAN and also the uh, committee of the ICHAR and of the ACWC that they have to respect all the um, obligations that they have to, uh, to achieve in the what is the main focus of the file? Oh, before we go to the main focus, what would you think will be the most concerning issues for Thailand if we talk about the uh, women's right or discrimination against women? Um, I think that we have to sensitize the people in the um, in the legal systems, mm. yeah, uh, on the gender issues. Mm and the, uh, what is the human rights, uh, in particular in, um, when they deliberate the cases on the sexual violence against women like rape or domestic violence, they should be uh, more gender sensitive and um, they uh, should not uh, reinforce this uh, gender stereotype 
Mm. Yeah, like for instance, when women get raped, they would see how she how dressed. The woman dressed. Yes, right. even the our current prime minister, right, <laughs> <laughs> make that kind of comment. But it's good that he apologized mm. later on. So I think that you can see that people in general do not get understand. So um, we should not be content only have an, having a new law, mm. but we should also put the law into practice for the um, legal protection or promotion of the human rights of women. And currently there is this draft legislation on gender equality. Mm. Have you heard about that? <laughs> not yet. <laughs> yeah, because um, uh, one uh, obligation that the state party has uh, uh, to the to CEDAW, CEDAW right? yes, right. is to have this gender equality law. Mm. So Thailand um, has not yet this kind of law, but there is a kind of um, initiative right, and right. Of, uh, effort to make this law. But when we look at the draft of this law, oh my God, this is not what we would it's like not, to have it. Really <laughs> yes. Has the role of the foundation since the start until now changed? What is the focus now for the foundation in Thailand? The focus now is um, on the, the uh, to um, monitor the implementation of CEDAW right. in Thailand right. and also on the issues of uh, domestic violence uh, in terms of um, uh, what they call better to wife women syndrome by which it means that women who have suffered very long the domestic violence right. violence from their uh, partners from their husbands or what so at the end um, they don't have any other options so they may kill uh, their husbands oh, no, kill their husbands oh. in the course of the uh, struggle or right, right, whatsoever right. and then there is a big injustice on this because if the husband beats the wife then they go to this law on the protection of the victims of domestic violence mm. which has a very light punishment against the perpetrators right. but when a woman decided to or in in unintentionally uh, kill their husband right. then it will use the criminal law which has a very very harsh penalties against because the perpetrators that, yeah right. so i think what we are doing now is that they should use also this um, this argument of a better by syndrome mm. that the history of violence that the woman experience should be taken into account in the court deliberation as well. So far, we have uh, provided assistance, legal assistance to a number of women, and we can see also some changes in the mind of the prosecutor mm. or the judge which um, has a good result on the women like for instance the judge started to understand the history of domestic violence but it and they sympathy yeah, right. uh, have sympathy on the women and then the women would not get a severe punishment uh, like for instance um, at the end of this month the, of this month, there will be another court verdict in Surin that we provide a lawyer right. to defend the women right. and working with the prosecutor right. and the judge. So we hope we are looking forward to the. So does that mean case. you have to work with some uh, legal yeah, uh, yeah. organization as well? Yeah, we work with the um, with the national law. Uh, office right uh, and also with some um, gender sensitive lawyer <laughs> yeah so has how the foundation work changed sounds like you start from the bottom up before but now it sounds broader and actually more with the legal aspect and the policy making right because I think right from the beginning, when we talk about the issue of trafficking or prostitution, uh, we work at different levels, like we provide assistance to women at the local level, and we work for the national reform at mm. the national level. And at the regional and international, we also uh, took part in the international campaign. Like in 1993, there is this international conference on the human rights, and we also got involved 
involved in the international campaign on violence against women, on the human rights of women, and violence against women should be considered as the violation of human rights. Mm. And uh, result in this, at the international level, we got this declaration on the elimination of all forms of violence against women mm. and we have the special UN Rapporteur on violence against women. So I think that um, the foundation does not confine their work only at the local level or at the national level but we also collaborate. Yes, uh, and right now it's like ASEAN level like the uh, People's Forum we mm. also trying to organize some workshops on so coming to the ASEAN integration in 2015, the end of 2015, mm -hmm. would you think the landscape work would change for the uh, foundation or any civil society that have to work with uh, discrimination against women itself? Um, I think that um, one good thing is that also with the uh, support of the UN women. So women in the region, at, at least at the ASEAN region, they come together and uh, build up like um, women caucus to lobbying together mm. on a certain specific uh, women relevant issues. Yeah, and um, I think that right now our concern is on the migration of uh, women and men and children also. So uh, now we talk only about the uh, ASEAN market, yeah? that mm. uh, good will flow, but then how about the people, right. particularly the unprofessional, unskilled people mm. who move anywhere right now right. and then encounter um, many human forms of human rights violations, right. abuse, exploitation. So ASEAN should also um, work on this, having a clear policy on this. As far as we heard, ASEAN is trying to um, make a convention, ASEAN Convention on Trafficking in Persons. But um, I think migration should not be confined only in the trafficking, right? Mm. And uh, so there are two things that um, the women's groups and also some other uh, human rights groups in ASEAN, they are trying to promote the rights of uh, migrant persons, women, men and children also. And also um, trying to um, look into the uh, this draft convention that the convention, ASEAN Convention on Trafficking in Persons, that should be a clause or a section on the protection and assistance of victims of uh, trafficking. So what will be the next goal for the foundation? Oh. Human oh, it's rights. still the same thing. <laughs> Human rights of women. So the next mission, not only of the foundation, but of the women's rights, human rights group, is to make sure that the gender equality law uh, uh, complies right. with the international human rights standards. And there should not be any uh, exception on discrimination because mm. right now there is three exceptions that discrimination could happen yeah right. that's one thing and the other thing in this law there should be a very uh, good section how the government will promote equality opportunities for women and men mm. in Thai society and there should be also uh, allocation of resources in this in this uh, legislation. Otherwise, you have good laws, but then you cannot implement it right. because you don't have resources. So there should be also resources included in the bill. Well, thank you very much for your time yeah, today. It seems like you. a lot of work and a lot of details just mm -hmm. regarding the discrimination mm -hmm. for women. Thank you very much. Okay, it's my pleasure. To ensure the basic human rights for all genders, the inequality, the opportunity and the resources allocation is what needs to be discussed to make a positive change in the society. Until we see you next time in Thailand 2020, I am Tulip Max from Pope. Sadiqah.